Hi everyone, this is Nikki. I'm so glad to have you back on the channel. Today we are going to be looking at a DIY way to create a stitching die from your regular dies. So I'm going to take you through two different things that I have used to make my dies into stitching dies. And that way if you're interested in getting started stitching on your cards, you can do this relatively inexpensively. So we're going to look at what you need to look for in the current die cuts that you have or the ones that you're thinking about buying and how to easily make these into stitching dies. We'll of course complete the entire card just so that you have that as a reference. And I'm going to create my stitching dies with a background of patterned paper. So I started by cutting out these two pieces of this die so that you could see the difference and what we're looking for when we want to make a stitching die. So this one that has the holes all around the outside right here, that one to me immediately makes me think, ooh, if I just put a hole in the center, I could make this into a stitching die. So let me show you what things you need to check. You definitely need to check what you're gonna be using for your needle, which this one is not sharp, but it's a size 20. It's what's recommended for stitching dies. And it fits perfectly through those holes. So I already know, okay, those holes are good. Now I need to look at ways to put a hole in the center. And you can put a hole anywhere you want to, whatever makes the most sense with your pattern. This to me is the easiest way. This is the We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. And it's got all these different sizes that you can punch holes with. It does have a limitation in that, depending on the size of the piece that you're gonna put in, you can only punch a hole so far in, so probably about an inch into an item. So let me show you with a post-it note what the different sizes of these holes are. So I picked a neon orange so that you could see through the holes here on camera and see the different size holes that this has. So you've got lots of options with it. We're gonna go for a smaller hole and see if our needle fits through it. So I'm gonna test it on a post-it note first. We're gonna look at the 1 16th size because this 1 8th seems a little too big. And we're gonna see if our needle goes through this hole. So let's punch it real quick and then we'll see if the needle will fit through that. And it's perfect, so that's a great size hole. It's a little bit different size than the ones on my die cut, but that's not gonna matter. We're gonna be covering it with stitching, so it's going to be perfectly fine. So just double check your needle before you start punching holes and things and make sure that everything fits. Key tip here, grab yourself a little magnet piece so that you don't lose your needle on your desk. Okay, so we're ready to punch out this hole. I just used a pencil and my grid lines to create a little dot. So I created a little pencil dot that I'm gonna be able to see through this hole puncher. So you'll see me kind of messing with it to try to get the right angle to make sure that I see that dot. And then once I line it up, I can just squeeze the handle and it will punch out the middle hole. So let's look at that. That center hole is ever so slightly smaller than my outside ones, but it's not going to matter. We're going to have thread going through it. So let me show you another hack that if you do not have a little hole puncher like I have here, some things that you could use to create this hole. I grabbed myself a self-healing mat so that I can poke through this and then I'm going to look at my different tools. I have this um, X-Acto knife type thing from Tonic and this other Ranger pokey tool. When I look at it I realize that that X-Acto knife is going to be a little bit large but this right here seems like it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is just carefully force it through and it does make a good size hole. If you have you know, like I said, drop your needle through it. It fits perfectly. It doesn't make as pristine of a hole as that little hole puncher, but it's going to be fine. Now, if I try to cut it with something like this, it's going to create too large of a hole. See how big that is? That is going to lose your thread and it's not going to be as easy to use. So I would recommend using something that has a little sharp edge like this that you can force through the paper carefully and not rip it. Now using a pokey tool really works better in the center of an item. If you try to do it on these little edges, you're going to rip the paper. So that's where that hole punch comes in handy. 
Okay, and I just found some thread that matched this so well. It is a DMC 932, and it's just been in my cross-stitching kit. So I'm going to use this color because it looks really good with this set. And then I'm going to cut my piece. I am going to keep two of the threads to stitch. You could stitch it thicker if you wanted, but I usually do two um, for each of these. Now the way I hold it is I tend to adhere this to the back versus trying to tie a knot. I just think it looks cleaner from the front. So, and I'm going to need adhesive to attach it to the rest of my dies anyway. So I just grab a little piece of double-sided adhesive. I pull on it, make sure it's going to stay. And then I'm just going to do simple stitching. Now I know some people love watching stitching, so I am going to speed it up a little bit. But we're going to go around. I do have to change my thread at least once. But look at how beautiful this color looks with this pattern paper. No worries. I will link everything in the description so you will have um, the colors and this is the only piece of this rosette that we're going to stitch because it's going to be the top piece, so the most visible. You could stitch other parts, but you're only going to see those edges because of how these dies layer. So I wanted my visible part to be the stitching, so this will be the top of the rosette. If you are liking this video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. That helps us out so much, and all of these products will be linked in the description so don't worry about trying to keep up with what color floss this is I've got all of that in the description for you when I end a piece of floss I do the same thing that I do when I am starting I go ahead and grab another piece of double-sided adhesive and I attach that piece firmly to the back I trim this piece off and then we're ready to start another one. So you know the back of my die is going to have lots of little pieces of double-sided adhesive, but that's no worry. We're gonna have those to be able to apply this on our card. I'm going back to separating that same piece of thread that I have into two sections. So two pieces um, for each of this to keep it consistent and I'll need to thread my needle and get started. So I'll speed this up a little bit as I finish up this rosette. I just love how this turns out. I love adding those extra little details to your dies just to make them even more special. This is gonna make a super impressive card anyway because the rosette is so 3D, it's amazing. This rosette I think would be great on things like cupcakes or invitations or lots of different party ideas besides just using it on a card. So let's assemble the rest of the card so you can see what I did. The last step is to adhere this and trim off the edges and then I'm going to show you how good this looks with this rosette. It looks so amazing. Look at that. It's just awesome. It's really just a little extra thing that makes it even more amazing. So let's put the card together so you can see how it turned out. I used the pearls that go with this um, pattern paper and I'm going to put one right in the center just to give it that kind of like pinwheel effect. It looks so beautiful and I love that Honeybee makes pearls and gems that match each of their paper collections because you can create this amazing monochromatic die cut with some pearls and it all coordinates. So tell me what you think of those hacks in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And now I'm going to put together the rest of this 3D rosette. It is such a cool die, and I'm going to be using multicolor blue pages here, so different patterns on the blues, but they all coordinate with each other. So we're going to start with the ruffles, which are these parts right here. I only use the big ones because we're only going to make a really large rosette, not the small one. But you'll see me cutting some of the small ones because I have those set aside for another project. But this is how they come out. And you need to do, for the large one, we need to do six of these ruffles. Now before we start die cutting anything else, I'm going to show you these have score marks in between each of, so you see the little opening at the top, and you'll watch how I score. I'm just adding to those score marks to make my folding a little bit easier. So you see how they fold and they ruffle, they fold back and forth. But the having that score line just makes that a more defined fold. So you can use your board if you've got one, or you can just use your bone folder and flatten these folds really well so that you get the cutest little ruffled area um, behind our nice little rosette. 
So here's how those folded pieces are starting to look. We need six of these, so it does take a little bit of time to fold them back and forth and get them nice and crisp. And then we're gonna attach them together and this will make our rosette. Okay, so I'm gonna use double-sided adhesive. I believe this is 1 8 inch um, tape. And I'm gonna put just a little strip on each end of these pieces and connect them together. Now I usually tear this tape because to me that's a little bit easier just using my fingernail to tear, but of course you can um, use a tape runner, you could do liquid adhesive if you're okay holding these together for a minute. I feel like double-sided adhesive works a little bit better, but you can see how this is starting to fit together. It's all going kind of in a circle, and then when we get to our last piece, we attach these, pinch them so you make sure they're good and adhesed, and then we're going to slowly flip this to a rosette. Do you see that? Now, to hold it this way and not have it pop up like I just did, you're going to need to set something on top of it or go ahead and put your next piece on. So how it's going to stay together are with the die cuts that we have. So I used two circles, one of which we've already turned into a stitching die, but I'm going to cut out this circle from my little die cutting machine and we're going to attach it. So I'm going to run that paper through this little die cutting machine, which these, by the way, are quite convenient when you're doing small items. I cut two of this die out that I'm going to adhere to the front in case I needed the strength of having one on the front and the back, but I really only needed this one. So I'm going to add liquid adhesive and then I'm going to place it on top of my rosette while I'm holding it in position. And then I'm going to set a acrylic block on top to hold a little bit of pressure. Now I advise using liquid glue because you see how it wants to pop open and I pushed it back down. I like the liquid glue so that I can adjust that rosette as needed. Now I'm briefly going to show you this background. I heat embossed in clear on this background and I know it's a little hard to see in this video. I'm going to do a whole nother video that has um, embossed backgrounds using this release from Honeybee and so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how I created that plus in this clip it's a little bit difficult to see. I did add some of the thread behind the rosette and then I added a sentiment strip. This is from the new release also. It says sending you sweet birthday wishes. I think this card would be a great baby card. I mean, it could make all kinds of things. I think it would be so cute for a newborn baby boy just because of the colors that I picked. Um, but I also think it works excellent as a birthday card. You, Like I said, you can use these rosettes on all kinds of decorating if you're doing a birthday and they are just adorable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's check out the final projects. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe on my channel and know that everything is linked in the description if you're looking for any of these products. I hope you have a great day and here's a video I think you would like.